Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as he said, my name is Colin Keeley. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Monarch Bio. And I would like to tell you today about our uh, system for local delivery of engineered lymphocytes uh, treating solid tumors. So Monarch Bio is focused on commercializing next generation cell therapy and regenerative medicine products based around our thin film nitinol technology platform. The first product, our lead product, we're calling the engineered lymph node or ELN, which is a unique platform for local delivery of cell therapies treating solid tumors that was co-developed uh, with the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. And we now have data from five different preclinical models, both xenogenic and syngenaic, showing a significant increase in the efficacy of these cell therapies when they are delivered using our approach. So there we go. So this is the problem that we think we're trying to solve. I think many people in the room know here that while the results in hematologic malignancies have been stunning, frankly, uh, they have not replicated those results in the solid tumors and by a pretty wide margin. And we think that these are the three primary challenges holding the field back, and that would be inefficient trafficking of the engineered cells when they're delivered intravenously, uh, the immunosuppressive tumor microenvironment so that even when the cells get to where they're supposed to go, they don't do what they're supposed to do, and thirdly, the uh, phenotypic diversity of solid tumors prevents an engineered cell from recognizing the, uh, the heterogeneous solid tumor. So our solution is, again, the engineered lymph node. So what we do is we take a micro-patterned thin film nitinol construct, and then we functionalize it with uh, a mixture of immune-stimulating adjuvants. The engineered cells are then seeded on that construct and the whole thing is placed in direct apposition to the tumor. So we think these, this solves the three key challenges by delivering ultra-high cell densities exactly where they need to be. It provides an immune-stimulating microenvironment so that the engineered cells can proliferate and adopt a more tumor-killing phenotype. And thirdly, we've shown that when you functionalize the scaffold with the appropriate adjuvants, you can actually achieve this synergistic effect with the native immune system, and we've even shown tumor immunization effects in some of our uh, syngenaic mouse models. Keep going. Additional advantages. Because we're using cells, cell numbers on the tens of millions scale as opposed to the billions that are typically used this, these days, uh, we think we can get away from leukapheresis. We think it's practical to collect the necessary cell numbers from simple intravenous blood draws. In addition, because no cells are being asked to take up home in the bone marrow, there's no bone marrow conditioning, which can be a very morbid uh, procedure and costly as well. Uh, finally, we think it's reasonable to hypothesize that there will be less systemic toxicity because it is a local delivery strategy. Uh, a word for potential partners in the audience. Uh, the point of this slide is that we're very easy to work with. Um, we have our process to generate our cell scaffold, their engineered lymph node, and it proceeds completely in parallel with the cell therapy manufacturing process. So uh, if we were to partner with someone, they would do whatever they do with their cells. We do what we do with our scaffold. And then at the end, the cells are simply seated on the scaffold. The product can then be frozen and shipped anywhere in the world. Uh, for clinical use. So um, I, I won't hit too much on, where am I supposed to point this thing? Uh, these results, but I, I do think it's helpful to be reminded of the challenge that we're facing. So hematologic malignancies, let's call the complete response rate for cell therapies somewhere around 60%. Uh, but if you look at the data that's been published as of, you know, say mid-2018, I think was when we put this slide together, the complete response rates in solid tumors have been very bad. I mean, I don't say that to criticize anyone, but it's just true. Um, and I think, as you might have seen from the presentation already, we've adopted sort of a more engineering-focused approach to this problem. And I think that's unique, because I think a lot of the people that work at the cell therapy companies come from a more biologic, cell biology, molecular biology background. And so they're kind of thinking to themselves, like, OK, if I find a new target, if I increase the affinity of my receptor, that I can really bridge that gap. But I would suggest to you, in our opinion, it's unrealistic to think that you're going to go from something like a 10% complete response rate all the way up to 60 or 70% that we're getting in the hematologic malignancies just from that purely sort of molecular biology approach. So we believe 
that new ideas are needed, and we think that what we have is a very credible pathway to increasing the efficacy. So there is a clinical need for local delivery. Again, I'm, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but there are hundreds of thousands of patients diagnosed with locally advanced unresectable malignancies. Uh, one of the things we often get asked is, what about metastatic disease? Well, I did allude to earlier that we have seen tumor immunization effects when uh, the scaffold is appropriately functionalized. However, I wouldn't say that that's where we should start clinical development. We should start clinical development in patients with locally advanced unresectable disease, pancreatic cancer, non-small cell lung, glioblastoma. There's very large patient populations amenable to a local delivery strategy. So uh, let's look at some actual data. So this is just a little movie that I like to show. It doesn't seem like it's plain. Yeah, all right. Anyway, that was a cool movie of the cells dancing around on the film prior to implant. But uh, to give you an idea of how this, how this actually works, uh, this is a metastatic ovarian cancer model. It was, this work was performed at Fred Hutch uh, about six or nine months ago. In the panel on the lower left, you can see the um, image of the mouse's diaphragm. It's, it's riddled with tumors, and this is what we think is actually kind of a good model because if a patient with metastatic you know, peritoneal carcinomatosis goes through a debulking procedure for ovarian cancer, uh, oftentimes the metastases on the diaphragm, it's very difficult to remove them, so they would be amenable to this local delivery strategy. So you can see in panels two and three, that's the implantation of our film, and at the end, uh, we have the film with the cells uh, loaded in direct apposition to the tumor that is being treated. So T-cell imaging data. So for this experiment, there were three control groups. There's an untreated mouse, an intravenous injection of 10 million cells, an intratumoral, direct intratumoral injection of 10 million cells, and then local delivery on the ELN of only 2 million of the cells. And I think it's pretty clear from this data that we achieve a much higher and more sustained localization of the cells, as you would expect from a local delivery strategy. But I think it gets a little more um, interesting when you start actually quantifying that effect. So if you're counting photons here, we're achieving an 842-fold increase in signal at 20 days out. So that is a massive increase in the drug load right at the site of the tumor. That's very important. And so you might ask yourself, well, that seems like a really big number. How, you know, how are you getting that large of an increase? Well, what we know is that because of the immune-stimulating environment that we're providing the cells with, we get about a 24 times increase in the cell population. That's why we don't need large numbers. So if we put in 10 million cells, we think that we're actually delivering somewhere around 240 million at the site of the tumor. So it's a very powerful technique. But let's look at actual tumor killing. So here we have actual tumor imaging as opposed to T-cell imaging. It's the same control groups, intravenous administration, intratumoral injection, and then local delivery with the ELN. And I think the results here are pretty clear. In all the control groups, we had uh, widespread metastatic fatal disease in the animals, whereas in those treated with the ELN, they're almost 100% cleared uh, after 20 days. And we can look at the Kaplan-Meier survival curve. And we achieve 70% long-term survival in the mice treated with our technique, as opposed to 100% mortality in all the control groups. And I think it's also worth pointing out that even the mice that did ultimately die, they had a significantly longer survival, you can see, on that Kaplan-Meier curve than any of the control group mice. So again, we think this is a very powerful and credible technique to improve the efficacy of existing cell technology. Keep going. Sure, I'm having trouble with this. Okay, so it's not a one-off. We've done it again and again and again. All different cell types, all different tumor models, xenogenic, syngeneic, we always see a very robust effect. So we're firm believers in this local delivery strategy, and we think it is uh, a very credible path to treating solid tumors with cell therapies. I won't talk too much about the management team. We're happy to, uh, our CEO is here with me. We're happy to chat with you after the talk if you want to learn more about the company. Um, we're sort of in the process of closing our first round of, so we're calling it a seed round of institutional financing. Uh, the next step for us is a Series A uh, to really get this technique into the clinic as quickly as possible. And then we're also looking for uh, strategic partners with existing cell therapy assets that may want to uh, enhance the efficacy of the assets that they already have. 
So that is the talk. Yes. Yeah, and that's, that's another question we always get asked. So um, probably just a little bit about the core technology is helpful for everybody. So it's, it's thin film nickel titanium. And uh, nitinol is not a bioresorbable material, um, but it is a material with a very long history of human implants. So orthopedic implants, uh, stents, surgical tools, all sorts of different stuff that is permanently implanted in the human body is made out of nitinol. So that's point number one. Point number two is I think you have to have an appreciation for the scale that we're talking about here. So when I say thin film, I'm talking about a construct that's five micrometers in thickness. For comparison's sake, a lymphocyte is about 20 micrometers in thickness. So for all intents and purposes, this is almost a two-dimensional structure. And compared to some of the implants that we put in humans' bodies permanently every day all over the world, this is it's almost nothing. So to me, do I wish it could be totally bioresorbable? Of course, but if all we're leaving behind is a five micrometer thick piece of nickel titanium, for me, that it's not significant. Yes? Right, so we do, um, so I, I, I alluded briefly during the talk that we don't think metastatic patients are the place to start clinical development of this therapy. Um, in fact, if you back up, we, we see the ultimate role for this therapy as somewhat akin to radiation therapy today. So radiation therapy is actually the most successful local delivery oncology therapy out there, right? You get your tumor resected, and then they irradiate that resection bed and the surrounding lymph nodes to decrease the rate of recurrence. So that's how we see this, too. So someone would go in, get their tumor resected, and then you would put the film with the cells in the resection bed to decrease the rate of local recurrence and clean up the draining lymph nodes. Um, we do have evidence uh, from some syngeneic mouse models that when the scaffold is appropriately functionalized and the mouse is cleared of their tumor, and then that same mouse is challenged with the same tumor, they are now immunized. So that is very intriguing, and it's something that uh, once we're fully funded, I'd like to explore more. Um, but it's not per se an abscopal effect, but it's sort of close. So that, that's something we need to look into. All right, thank you very much.